Hello and welcome to revisiontuition.com. My name is Simon and in this tutorial I'm going to talk about drugs. I'm going to break this down into how drugs can affect the body, classification of drugs, addiction and tolerance to drugs, and then finally I'm going to look at medical testing of drugs. Okay, now I'm going to look at how drugs work. Now, drugs work by altering the chemical reactions that take place in the body. That could be by speeding up those chemical reactions in the brain, in the case of stimulants, or slowing down brain activity, in the case of sedatives. It could also be interacting with chemical reactions that take place with invading microbes into your body. For example, antibiotics, like penicillin, break down the cell wall in the bacteria that get into your body and stop them from reproducing inside the body. So kill the bacteria inside your body. Okay, now I'm going to look at classification of drugs. Now drugs can be classified in lots of different ways. For example, we could classify drugs as helpful or harmful. Or we could classify drugs as legal or illegal. We can also classify illegal drugs as class A, class B, class C. Class A would include things like heroin and cocaine. Class B, things like amphetamines. And class C would include things like anabolic steroids and tranquilizers. Okay, now I'm going to look at addiction and tolerance to drugs. Now, addiction means that you, your body physically needs that chemical. So, for example, nicotine actually mimics, it copies a chemical which is used in the brain. And if you take in nicotine, you stop producing that chemical in the brain. So, therefore, you need to take in that nicotine, otherwise you'll suffer from withdrawal symptoms. Now, it's not just nicotine that the body can become addicted to. The body can also become addicted to caffeine or to illegal drugs like heroin. Okay? So this is when the body actually needs to take in a drug and you actually suffer from withdrawal symptoms without that particular chemical. A tolerance is when the body actually gets used to taking a chemical in. So therefore you need to take a higher dose to get the same effect as you originally had. Now that could be seen in things like uh, alcohol, and in other illegal drugs like heroin. Okay, finally, I'm going to cover medical testing of drugs. Now, drugs need to undergo a strict regime of testing before they're released on the general public. Now, there's four stages to this testing procedure. First of all, we have computer models. So scientists will use computer models to see how that drug is likely to affect human beings. Next, we have tests on human tissue. Now, this is done in a lab. It's, they'll test human tissue. Now, this shows the effect of the drug on that particular tissue, but it doesn't show the effect of that drug on the whole organ involved or on the whole organ systems involved. Next, we'll have testing on animals. Now, there's two different animals that are required to be tested on. Now, a lot of people disagree with animal testing, partly because the testing on animals doesn't show 100% how that drug might affect human beings. And finally, we have human trials. Now, this is trialing the drug on human volunteers. Now, exam boards in the past have actually made the distinction between human trials and animal testing. So make sure you get the testing with animal testing and human trials the right way around. Uh, the human trials, it's trialing the drug on human volunteers to see how that drug actually affects the human organs and organ systems. And if all of those tests go okay, later on, a lot later on, the drug might be released on the general public and can be used by general public to treat diseases. Now, the reason why there's such a strict regime of testing drugs is because the process can go wrong. 
Now, in the past there was a drug called thalidomide. Now, thalidomide was used in the 1950s as a sleeping pill, but doctors also realised that it could treat morning sickness in pregnant women. So they used it to treat the morning sickness in pregnant women, but they later found out that it caused stunted growth in the fetus, and in particular it caused stunted growth of the arms and of the legs. So they stopped using this drug to treat morning sickness. They did a lot more testing on it. Now this drug had actually been tested properly. It had been through all these four stages of testing, but it hadn't been tested on pregnant mothers and they didn't know the effects that it could have on the unborn fetus. Now, they've actually done more tests on the drug thalidomide, and they've found out that it can actually be used now to treat leprosy, it can be used to treat AIDS, and it can also be used to treat certain types of cancer, but it's no longer used at all to treat pregnant mothers. Okay, thank you very much for watching this tutorial. If you have any questions on this tutorial, please visit the website and use the email and expert link. And goodbye.